In this video, I'm going to talk about the hedge fund trading strategy of long, short equity. Stay tuned. Hey traders, a very warm welcome to you. Okay, so let's talk about this trading strategy of long, short equity. This is a very, very popular strategy um, with hedge funds. Uh, we know we tend to know that hedge funds will categorize themselves into specific st strategies, or they may run multiple funds, but with each individual strategy sort of defined. And one of the more popular ones is this long short equity strategy. So let's have a look at it and let's see how it all works. And let's see, maybe we can take some of the ideas from the hedge funds are using to implement into our own trading. All right. So there are a few little, uh, you know, like most of these strategies, there's no actual certain specific way that everyone does it. Everyone does it a little bit differently. But let's talk about a few of them. Let's talk about the overall approach and the overall thesis and idea behind it. And then some uh, and then some changes that often go on in the hedge fund world. So long short equity traditionally would be, OK, they are going to buy a stock they believe is underperforming and is going to go move higher. And they're going to short a stock they believe is outperforming and is going to move lower. So the idea is you make money on the short side, you make money on the long side. It's a mean reversion, a double sided mean reversion trade, if you like. You're shorting the overvalued, you're buying the undervalued, assuming they're both going to come back to a mean. You make money on the short, you make money on the long. That's kind of, in theory, what they are looking for. Now, often they will uh, look for trades in specific sectors. So, for example, I've got here a uh, supermarket sector in the UK. You've got Tesco's and you've got Sainsbury's. Just for argument's sake, a hypothetical example here for this for this video. They believe that Tesco's have got a lot of market share and they think they're going to give that market share to Sainsbury's. So they think that Tesco's is overvalued at the moment and they think Sainsbury's is undervalued. Now, these are two very similar supermarkets. Most of the time, they're situated almost next to each other. They've got small, they've got small kind of convenience store size ones and they've got large, uh, big multi-floor supermarkets selling exactly the same goods, obviously some own brand stuff. But the point is they're in exactly the same space geographically. They're in exactly the same business model. Um, they're very, very identical in the way they behave. And it's purely going to be a case of which company can do better than the other. Now, if we have, if they believe that, you know, Tesco's is going to, under, is going to uh, uh, go back to the mean because it's overvalued, they're going to short, short Tesco's, they're going to go long sales. But let's say they're a million pounds um, worth of stock of shares on each trade. That makes the market neutral and makes them sector neutral. So if the market were to rip off to highs and push even higher, um, Tesco's is going to go higher, Sainsbury's is going to go higher, so they're going to make money on their long side, but they're going to lose money on their short trade. Their net gain is going to be zero. Same with the supermarket sector. Let's say for whatever reason, uh, the supermarket sector dies a death and struggles and the whole sector just plummets and there's no margin there. For, for whatever reason that may be, they're going to make money on their short side on Tesco's, but they're going to lose money on their long side um, for their long Sainsbury's position. So what this is doing is it stripping out any external influence and just really nailing down into exactly what they want to achieve, which is the they want to buy the underperformance of Sainsbury's and they want to go short the overperformance of Tesco's, believing that it's due to change. So it strips out everything else and gives them that market neutral feel, that sector neutral feel. Now, of course, we could use many examples here. We could talk about pharmaceuticals like AstraZeneca and Glaxo. Uh, we could talk about FedEx UPS. We could talk about I mean, this is multiple mining companies, um, you know, retail companies, Marks and Spencer's next in the UK. Notice how, you know, this is a very, very similar model. These Tesco's sayings are very, very similar, but they can diversify slightly away and they can have similar kind of stocks. Let's say Twitter, Facebook, similar space, what they're operating in, but different models so that they've got that little bit of exposure to different, uh, different sort of business models. So they can either have it as, as, as tight as they like, for want of a better word, or, or as loose as they like. And, you know, ultimately they could even go completely uncorrelated, but have some kind of market neutral position. So they're not interested in being sector neutral, but they are interested in being market neutral. 
they could maybe take a short on a supermarket and a long on a tech stock or, or a basket of tech and a basket of retail if they believe retail is going to uh, struggle but tech's going to improve you know that kind of thing so they're still creating that long short position um, but it's not quite as market neutral and sector neutral as something like this and finally guys just one more thing um, that a lot of the hedge funds do is they they kind of have the 130 percent 30 percent rule or 120 20 percent rule which means they'll have 130 percent of their portfolio in long and 30 percent of their portfolio in short to give them a long bias because over time markets go higher so they're, they're benefiting from the from the overall tide that pushes everything higher but they've still got some short exposure and so they're you know there'll be a probably department in the fund that looks specifically um for shorts maybe they have kind of five sectors that they um you know look at carefully in each department will say well this we think this company's overvalued it's a good short candidate another uh, analyst from a department would say this one this one and the, and the hedge fund manager would then pick the ones he believes should be allocated to his 30 percent short portfolio and then similarly of course for the long you know he's going to pick the ones that he thinks will outperform and probably he'll pick some in there that just just going to be nice and steady and are going to dampen down the the kind of returns uh, depending on what the fund's objective is of course but if he wants to make sure he's not completely extreme one way or the other he might just have you know 50 60 percent of kind of steady non-volatile long-term stocks in there then he might pick a few kind of you know potential multiple multiple baggers you know decent movers and then offset that with some short positions on stuff he believes is overvalued so you know there's there's, there's obviously multiple permutations of this multiple ways they can mix and match their portfolio and, and create the fund they want. But fundamentally, this long short equity is going long, a basket of stocks they believe are undervalued and are going, to out, are going to perform well or outperform, and going short the stocks or the companies they believe are, are overvalued and are going to underperform, or just generally stocks that are going to maybe go bankrupt or stocks that are just generally going to struggle. And hopefully, they're going to get the boost from both in a perfect world, make on the short, make on the long but if they don't as long as the differential happens and let's say the market goes up but the long goes up and the short stays stagnant they're still making money all right guys that's long short equity comments in the comment section below if you enjoyed the video thumbs up see you in the next one bye bye